I'm Stacy Chairs and welcome to my kitchen. And for this episode, we are going to take and make a cauliflower Alfredo bake. And so everybody loves fettuccine Alfredo. It's garlicky, it's creamy, it's great comfort food. Not necessarily that nutritious. So we're going to update the recipe, tweak it a bit, make it a little lower in fat and make it a little healthier for you because we're using cauliflower at the base instead of pasta. Now you can serve this as a main dish or a side dish. For me, I have this as a main dish with just a nice salad on the side and we go meatless for that day and for that meal. And so it's a little better for you, lower in carb, all that kind of stuff. So we'll see what you think about this recipe and my take on Alfredo. So we're gonna start out with a bit of cauliflower. So uh, get a nice head of cauliflower, break it down into florets. And so what I'm gonna do with these is I'm gonna roast them prior to baking the Alfredo. And I know it's, it seems like you're doing things twice, but if you take a raw vegetable like cauliflower, broccoli, and carrots, any of those guys, and you, you bake them without blanching them ahead of time or roasting them ahead of time, they tend to get a little rubbery and dry. So we're gonna roast them to draw some moisture to the surface, give them a little color, which will give them a visual interest, texture and flavor. And then we're gonna put them into the bake and then just kind of bake them with the Alfredo sauce to meld flavors. And you'll end up with a much better texture. And so we've got our, our cauliflower. We're gonna put a good quality, extra virgin olive oil on here. Here we go. Here, we'll toss this up. At, um, just a, a couple of tablespoons is all you really need. Here we go. And we're gonna put this onto a parchment lined baking sheet. Those guys lined up. And this is going to be a cauliflower Alfredo bake, but to give it a little bit more interest, I'm gonna roast some tomatoes as well. So I've got little tiny rainbow cherry tomatoes. And so they're an heirloom, a blend of, of cherry tomatoes. So we've got the yellow ones, which are the sun sugars and they're super sweet. We've got your standard cherries. We've got some of the little um, tomatoes that when they're solid green, they're actually ripe. They've got an interesting look and a little bit more of an earth flavor, a little less acidic. So it's all a, a nice little fun blend of tomatoes. Put those in there. We're going to give those guys a little bit of olive oil. There's usually enough in, left in the bowl from the cauliflower. Whoop, escapee. There we go. To get them well coated. There we go. And onto the same tray. We're gonna hit these guys just a little bit of salt. So a little bit of kosher salt, not a lot. I use kosher salt because it's a non-iodized salt. It's gonna give us a cleaner flavor. It's gonna draw some moisture out of them and it's gonna enhance their flavor. So it's, it's an all, all a good thing. But again, use of salt really depends on what your doctor tells you you need to do for your own personal health. You can roast them without the salt. It's not going to make a huge, huge difference. And then I'm going with a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. And we're gonna put these vegetables into a 425 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes. And then we will take and get those out. Once our sauce is done, once those are roasted, we'll put the Alfredo bake together. So we're gonna get a pan over here going. Let's pop this on and uh, get a little heat going here. I'm gonna work on medium heat. I'm gonna allow my pan to heat up slowly across the bottom and up the sides. And then we're going to make our sauce in there. For this recipe, we are gonna put the, for this part of the recipe, we are gonna put the extra virgin olive oil off on the side and we're gonna use a tiny bit of butter. And if you don't want to, if butter is not in your, in your wheelhouse, you can use a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil, you can use grapeseed oil, you can use avocado oil, but we do need a bit of fat for the base of this sauce because we do need to make what the French call a roux. A roux is a uh, cooked fat and flour paste used to thicken. And so we can't just use nonstick spray for this. We have to have enough fat to completely coat the flour. So fat of choice is up to you. I am gonna use a teeny bit of butter. You could of course use a, a margarine if you had wanted to, whatever you're comfortable with. Uh, whatever your doctor says is okay for you. Um, 
but we'll get this going. And I'm gonna, while I'm waiting for my pan to heat up and my butter to melt, I'm gonna get a little garlic mince. And so fresh is what I always encourage people. You're gonna get the best flavor out of fresh garlic. It has the most essential oil. It is a little tedious to use in that you either have to peel it and chop it or you have to press it through a press, but you will get the best results. The little jars of garlic, great for having on hand for an emergency, but that garlic is packed in a liquid and most of your flavor stays in that liquid, so you lose a lot. And so you're gonna get the best, best case scenario here. The other problem I have with the jars of garlic is they do put a preservative in them because garlic turns blue when it's packed in a liquid and they need to prevent that from happening. And so you always have a little bit of an off flavor with the garlic that's in the jar. Now, you think, well, mincing garlic is kind of, you know, it's, it's a messy and I don't want to deal with it. If you have a good garlic press, you can, you notice I'm popping the peels out. You can press your garlic right through the peel. You need to get a do, good heavy duty garlic press. This is a Xylus garlic press. Um, by, it's called Susie by, by Xylus. You can buy them in any well-stocked kitchen department, get them online with Amazon, um, but they're made out of a heavy gauge metal that doesn't bend. So you can really press through. So I've got a nice bit, my butter is all melted here. Got a nice bit of garlic. To start the base of our Alfredo, and now Alfredo is traditionally made with heavy cream, um, and that doesn't really fall into any sort of a heart-healthy diet. And so we're going to take and, and change things a little bit. This is one of my tweaks with the recipe. Now, normally when I make Alfredo, I melt a little butter, I, I saute a little garlic. I want to give it, you know, about 30 seconds to a minute so we really start to release the flavor and the essential oil. I don't want to brown my garlic because it gets a little bitter. But then once I have my garlic sauteed, I will literally just pour a couple of cups of heavy cream in here, bring it to a rapid boil. Heavy cream can take a full rolling boil without breaking. And I will just allow it to cook down, season it with salt and pepper and a little Parmesan. It's called a pan reduction sauce. You allow it to thicken naturally. Heavy cream is the only milk you can do that with. So when we're trying to cut fat and be a little bit more heart healthy, we have to find other ways to do that. And so that's why we're gonna make a roux. I've got my garlic in here sauteing in my just one tablespoon of butter. I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of flour. Here we go. We're gonna make sure our flour is completely enveloped in the fat. Here we go. And we're gonna give this about a minute to cook. What we're doing is we're, in this time that we're cooking our roux, you can see we've got a nice fat and flour paste. In this time that we're cooking our roux, we're cooking away any of the raw flavor that the flour will have. We're also allowing the fat to fully absorb all the flour, coat the flour, so that we won't end up with lumps in our sauce. This is a very safe way to thicken recipes. You can use this for gravies, sauces, uh, soups, anything where you need to thicken. A roux is a very safe way to do that. Standard roux is one tablespoon of fat to one tablespoon of flour will thicken one cup of liquid. I'm taking, decreasing the fat to one tablespoon and using two tablespoons of flour to thicken two cups of liquid. So I'm just cutting the fat back a little bit, playing with the science of the recipe a bit. And then instead of just using all milk in this, or cream, I am gonna use a little bit of a low sodium chicken broth for part of the base. This is my favorite brand. This is Pacific brand, and this is their organic free range low sodium chicken broth. It's as close to homemade as you're gonna find in a commercial product. And this only has 40 milligrams of sodium in one cup, which is huge. And if you look at, College Inn or Swanson brands, their regular chicken broth has around 870 milligrams in one cup. So this is a huge difference by cutting this back. So it's a really good product. We're gonna put about a cup in here, measured very accurately always. There we go. Put a cup in there. I'm gonna switch from my spatula to a whisk and we're gonna bump the heat up to about a medium high now because I wanna get this up to a simmer. We need to get this up to a simmer to see how thick this is going to actually get. Because 
your starch will not be at its maximum thickening until it's at a simmer. That goes for any type of starch, whether you're using potato starch, rice flour, um, flour, corn starch, arrowroot, any of those starches, they have to come to a simmer in order for you to really get a gauge on how thick they're gonna make your sauce. All the science in the world you know, as far as one tablespoon of fat, one tablespoon of flour, one cup of liquid, you can go by that recipe, have it turn out really thick one day and really thin another day. And that can be the difference in how you measure the flour. And it can be a difference in the protein content in the flour. Every brand of flour has a different amount of protein in it. And different types of flour have different amounts of protein. Pastry flour having the lowest protein. Then you have bleached all purpose. Then you go to unbleached all purpose, and then you go to bread flour having the highest amount of protein. And so they can all affect how it thickens. So you gotta get it up to a simmer, which we've got right now, and we're making a thick, very thick gravy. So we'll let that work. And then we're gonna take and get our milk in there. Now, remember I said we normally make Alfredo with heavy cream. We're gonna cut that back. A lot of people like to work with half and half. I find half and half really tricky to work with. It's the milk product that's gonna separate the easiest compared to um, whole milk or heavy cream or even some of your lower fat milks. This happens to be 1%. And you could even make this sauce with skim if you wanted. So um, the lower you go in fat, the lighter the sauce is gonna be the less smooth it's gonna feel on your palate. So you're gonna lose that smooth mouth feel going down in fat, because you get that smooth mouth feel from fat. Think about Leon's custard. How does that feel when you eat it? That's because of the fat that's in it. So I turned my heat all the way down to a low. Once we're gonna start putting a milk product in, you really wanna work on a low temperature. And there really is a proper way to put milk into a, a simmering sauce, and it's called tempering the milk. So I'm gonna take my milk, put it into a bowl. I'm gonna take a little bit of my garlic sauce right now, we'll call it. We're gonna put a little in. We're gonna whisk it. We're gonna take and put a little in, and we're gonna whisk it. What I'm doing is I'm slowly elevating the temperature of the milk to the temperature of the simmering sauce, so I'm less likely to break my sauce. And what I mean by breaking is that uh, if I put this milk in to a pot that's too hot, it's gonna separate and you're gonna get chunks of fat floating in it. So it's all gonna separate out and that'll even, it'll coagulate even a skim milk. So it's just kind of a separation and it's, it'll still be edible, you just, again, it's mouthfeel. You're gonna lose that mouthfeel. So we get this up. You probably can't see it in the camera, but I'm getting steam coming off of my milk. I do this in a metal bowl so I can feel how hot the, so the milk is getting. And I can feel this is almost as hot as my pot right here. So now I'm gonna take and slowly, remember this is down to low heat now. I'm gonna slowly work my tempered milk back in. Little bit at a time. Allow it to come up to temperature very, very slowly. And now once I get this all in, I'm gonna allow it to come back to just a simmer, barely a simmer. Now that I have the milk in here, if you allow it to come up to a really fast simmer, you can still separate it. And so we're gonna get just where we see a few bubbles starting to form, that at, at a simmer, that's when we're gonna move on with adding some Parmesan to our Alfredo sauce. I am gonna put a pinch of salt, just a tiny pinch. We don't want our food to be flat, but again, you have to determine whether or not you can include salt in your diet. Talk to your doctor about that. That's a tiny pinch, much, much less than what would have been in the full sodium chicken broth. Let's put it that way. We're gonna put a tiny pinch of black pepper in here. To, if you are not able to use salt, you could put a tiny squeeze of lemon juice in here, which will trick your palate into feeling like there's salt in the recipe. A little pinch of black pepper. Here we go, I just want a little, just starting to see some bubbles here. 
Let's, oh, I'm going to bring my heat up a little bit so that works a little faster. I'm just starting to see a little bit of tiny bubbles coming up. I'm going to keep my broth right here because my sauce might get a little too thick as it comes up and I might have to thin it down with just a little extra broth. Um, but once I get those bubbles in there, I'm going to add some Parmesan. Now you can buy a block of Parmesan, shred it yourself. Not a problem. That is a little bit tedious. Um, I cook a lot. I go through tons of Parmesan with my different cooking classes. And so I never shred it myself. I just don't have the time to do it. And so I buy my Parmesan pre-shredded in five pound bags. I buy a product imported from Italy. It's awesome product. Um, but for your everyday cooking, you can find great products at your local grocery store pre-shredded. So this is Bel Gioioso, which is a Wisconsin product. Pre-shredded Parmesan, it's a relatively young Parmesan. So it doesn't have a real intense flavor like some Parmesans can get. But for for our Alfredo bake, it's going to be awesome. Frigo is another one you can buy. What what I'm I, I try to get across to people is we want to avoid the green can. You know what I'm talking about. Anything that says pasteurized processed product is probably not something we want to use. And so um, a good quality pre-shredded parm. The only drawback to any cheese that's pre-shredded is they do generally put an anti-caking agent on them, like a cellulose uh, starch on there so that it doesn't wad back up into a block of Parmesan. So now that I've got that little, that little bit of a bubble going on in here, here we go. I am going to put some of my parm in. There we go. So we'll sprinkle some in. Whenever adding cheese, whenever you're adding cheese to any sauce, you do want your temperature lower. So I'm going to bop this back to a low heat natural cheeses, and by natural I mean not a processed product like Velveeta or Kraft Parmesan in the can, but natural cheeses like to melt at lower temperatures. If you go with too high of a temperature, that cheese will actually pull back together and stay in a lump. And so lower your temperature down. I sprinkle the cheese on top, and then I just took my spatula and I kind of soaked it so that it's floating underneath the surface of the sauce. I'm going to just allow the natural heat of the sauce to start the melting for me. After about 30 seconds, I'm going to come in and I'm just going to kind of stir in a little bit of a figure eight configuration. I don't want to do a lot of spinning like this because I can pull the cheese back together, but just a nice slow figure eight, get around these edges. My cheese is all nicely melted. My, my uh, Alfredo is ready for my bake. So let's take and, and get, I've got some, my cauliflower will pull out of the oven over here. So I've got my roasted cauliflower and my roasted tomatoes. You can see how that they, they have burst and opened up a little bit, which is a good thing because they've rendered out some of their moisture. You can see some of the moisture is baked off of that baking pan. So they're not gonna make our Alfredo bake extra wet and they're not gonna thin out that sauce real much. And our cauliflower's got a nice bit of color on there. It looks fantastic. We'll take and get a, a little eight by eight pan ready. Here we go. We'll get a nice spray on there. This will make life easier for cleanup later on. Here we go. I've got one more item we're going to put into our cauliflower bake here in a minute, but let's get these guys. I'm just going to utilize my parchment paper to move from one side to the other. Just put my tomatoes and my cauliflower in there. Slide this back out of our way. Let's kind of make sure that they are all evenly distributed because all my tomatoes fell in one corner there. Let's get our cauliflower tomatoes like that. Now before I put that sauce on, I do want to add a little bit of Parmesan to it. A uh, little bit of parsley to it. We already added the Parmesan. I catch myself making those mistakes all the time. I know what I'm talking about. But uh, we're going to put a little parsley in. This is Italian flat leaf parsley. And Italian flat leaf is the parsley we use for flavor. Curly parsley is the parsley we use for color. And so I want a little bit of flavor. This is earthy and bitter. It's gonna balance out our sauce really nicely. I'm gonna turn that sauce off, move it out of the way. 
This is just a nice bunch of parsley. Now, I don't go through and try to pick off every leaf. That would be really tedious. What I do is I wash this really well for about 30 seconds to a minute under fast running water, get it nicely shook out, and then I just crack off the top of my parsley. There might be a few stems that are, are a little bit thick that I wanna break off, but for the most part, these little thin stems, we can just chop right through those. They're not gonna hurt anything at all. They're gonna cook right in there. And so, but it saves us the work of trying to peel all the leaves off. Now I'm gonna take and just do a nice little mince on these. I just want a couple of tablespoons here. Let's move some of that off to the side. Break it up. I can either sprinkle it right on there or we can put it right into our sauce like that. Stir that in. It's going to give us, like I said, a little bit of, of extra flavor, a little earthy bitterness. It's also going to give us a bit of color too. And we're going to take our nice little sauce. There we go. Get that kind of moved around in there. Make sure I've got some, some pieces of cauliflower sticking up that haven't been coated in sauce, so I'll make sure and kind of give those guys a little bath there. We'll take some of that Parmesan, and you don't have to put extra Parmesan on if you don't want to, but it's going to help this to brown a little bit better, give us a little, little bit more color when it comes out of the oven. So we'll take, do a little bit like that. We're going to pop this in. About a 400 to 425 degree oven. Remember, this is all cooked. Now we need to kind of meld it together, kind of like taking and making a pot of macaroni and cheese, which you can eat, but if you bake it, it gets creamier and chewier and, and just better. That's, that's what we're doing right here. So we're gonna pop this in. We will see that in a little bit and we'll show you the finished product. All right, and we have our finished cauliflower Alfredo bake. Look at how gorgeous that is. Browned nicely on the top. All our little tomatoes popping up. Smells wonderful. It's such a good dish. I hope you'll try it at home. Leave us a comment. Let us know how you like the recipes. Um, sign up for the Karen Yance Center YouTube channel. Join us for our other videos. And have a great cooking day.